All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is uh, Kevin McKinnon, and I am the uh, temporary commissioner of deed. Most of you might know me as the uh, deputy commissioner for economic development, which uh, I will be going back to that job next uh, Tuesday. We are thrilled that uh, Matt Verilek, uh, <clears throat> the current uh, president of the uh, Central Minnesota Initiative Foundation, will be taking over here as the commissioner of deed. Uh, next Tuesday, and we are all thrilled uh, uh, for Matt to join us. Um, <clears throat> we really appreciate you uh, attending today for this information session uh, related to the state small business credit initiative. Uh, many of you have uh, been part of our updates uh, over the past, I guess, year and a half now uh, as we put the programs together and, and through the rollout. Uh, and now we're well uh, underway and and want to provide more information for all of you uh, at this critical uh, juncture. I'm joined uh, today by the program director, Drew Lindorfer, uh, who is also here. Drew and I will share uh, some of these slides here today. Uh, we also have a couple of speakers uh, who will also join us. Uh, I'm also uh, uh, pleased to share that John Endress and Tiffany Fettig are, are also with us. They are staff that work in Drew's uh, program unit on the uh, SSBCI uh, initiative. So, um, Drew, if you could advance the slide, uh, we'll get right into it. Just a quick uh, reminder here what uh, SSBCI uh, is. Uh, you'll notice that uh, SSBCI 2.0 uh, is the title of this uh, slide. Um, we received uh, SSBCI 1.0 back in 2012 and ran that through 2017. Um, in 2020, uh, the uh, Congress uh, allocated additional resources to this program to restart it uh, and uh, funded it uh, at least 10 times uh, greater than they had in the past. Uh, so Minnesota received $97 million uh, for uh, a variety of lending programs that we'll get into. Uh, we have uh, seven years to uh, essentially uh, encumber that money. Uh, we receive it in three different tranches. The first disbursement we have received, which is $29.5 million. Uh, and in order to receive the second disbursement, we must uh, spend 80% of that. Uh, just a reminder also, there's specific allocations and goals for socially and economically disadvantaged individuals or SETI owned uh, businesses and very small businesses. Uh, and uh, we do have definitions of SETI uh, listed on the website and also on here. Uh, but a really important piece uh, of this is that these SSBCI funds must be the cause uh, of and result in additional private financing being brought to bear. Uh, our uh, estimate here uh, of 10 to 1 private leverage is what our expectations are and what we uh, strive to uh, complete for, uh, for the U.S. Department of Treasury. Next slide, please, Drew. So as far as eligible business characteristics, they must be located in Minnesota. Uh, fewer than 500 employees, so the small business definition. Um, there are some exclusions for up to 750 uh, uh, employees at a business. Uh, funds must be used for uh, eligible purposes, which are outlined in uh, all of the programs. Uh, and there are a variety of certifications, as you might uh, expect. Uh, when you're using federal money that will need to be uh, need to be completed. Uh, also, other programs may have other additional eligibility restrictions uh, depending on the program that you're interested in. Next slide. So in order to um, uh, make our application to the US Department of Treasury, uh, we had to outline how we would how we believe uh, we would spend the money. Uh, we created uh, five new programs, uh, essentially, uh, and allocated the money as such. Uh, and you can see on the screen, um, we made uh, a large investment in venture capital. Uh, 
uh, and uh, also in loan participation, uh, and then some smaller uh, pieces in a few different funds. We have some flexibility to administratively move uh, some money between these funds, uh, but any major modifications do require uh, us uh, to seek an amendment from the US Department of Treasury. This does allow us to uh, move money, however, if programs aren't um, uh, being utilized as we would have anticipated in order for us to spend that 80% in order to get the second tranche. We do have that flexibility, however, uh, to move some money around. We will walk through uh, these programs here uh, uh, and give you some more information. Uh, and then at the end of this presentation, we'll open it up for uh, some questions. Next slide, Drew. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a couple of programs. These uh, two programs are direct programs, and by that I mean uh, they are available through application directly through DEED. Uh, the other programs that we'll talk about are uh, available through other lenders. Uh, and those will be coming later here in the presentation. So the first uh, program I just wanted to go over was the Growth Loan Fund. Uh, this is for early stage and startup businesses who are engaged in technology, technologically innovative industries. Some of you might recall uh, our original program called the Angel Loan Fund back in 2013-14 timeframe. Uh, it's sort of the same concept. Um, venture debt, uh, you could, uh, I guess, uh, call it that way. But um, applicants uh, who are planning to raise equity uh, can either be certified through the angel tax credit uh, program that we run or have it, uh, have support of at least one venture capital fund or an accredited investor uh, who will be planning to invest in that business. Uh, again, they are uh, direct loans from DEED. Uh, the loans uh, uh, of, are up to uh, $400,000 and is based on 20% of the defined equity fund funding raised in a 12 month period. And so if businesses are planning on raising equity over a 12 month uh, period, as an example, once they get to 70% uh, of that raise, uh, then we can start with our uh, loan proceeds. Uh, what we're uh, what we have for terms is a one percent interest, uh, seven year term, deferred payments until year four, uh, and payment begins uh, in year four uh, for fifty percent of the principal with a balloon payment due at maturity. Uh, some of those are different terms than our original program, uh, but really meant to uh, get the business used to uh, paying uh, paying back some debt. These are non-recourse uh, loans and uh, there is no collateral requirement uh, and uh, applications are available on our uh, program site. It's listed there. The second fund uh, that again is direct uh, through DEED is called our Automation Loan Participation Program. Uh, this will serve manufacturing distribution, technology, warehousing type businesses, uh, the purposes of these, the purpose of this loan program is to help uh, uh, small manufacturing companies, as an example, purchase machinery uh, to increase their productivity uh, and to add that automation uh, as part of their uh, operations. Uh, we believe this is a gap financing tool. Uh, it must be a gap financing tool for uh, and have a lead lender. Uh, we will talk a little bit more about um, uh, what it means from a lender's perspective here uh, in a minute, uh, but uh, we can provide up to $500,000 uh, on a five to seven year term at a 1% interest rate. We also uh, have payments deferred for up to 12 months, uh, so businesses can get buy the equipment, install it, uh, and uh, get people trained on it. Um, <clears throat> there are guarantees and collateral uh, are required in this program. Next slide, Drew. We are very fortunate uh, to have uh, one of our recipients uh, join us here today. 
uh, Dan Sacco, who's the president of Ameristar Manufacturing in Mankato. I will turn it over to Dan to say a few things about the loan program. Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I was speaking yesterday to some of your guys' representatives and kind of just explain how unique of an opportunity it was to take advantage of this and what it does um, specifically for us as a metal manufacturer in the state of Minnesota. Um, you know, especially right now with the, the economic climate and financing rates, um, it doesn't mean that we can stop uh, providing the technology improvements that our customers need and want. Um, so we, we would have to move forward with that regardless. And this just provides a, a unique and a very attractive way, especially for businesses like us, to obtain that, that technology advancement um, at an affordable rate, you know, at a time in an economic, economically challenging time. So um, we were, it was one of those things, I guess, when we saw as a business um, started looking into it, it was like, well, is this real? You know, because we had never seen it before. Um, then, of course, you know, after some uh, investigation and just discussions with you guys, um, it was certainly a sweetheart deal for, for any uh, business in the state of Minnesota and something I've shared. Now that we finally been improved, I was joking. I didn't want to share it with anyone else at first because um, we understood there was only a certain amount of funds to be allocated. But uh, yeah, certainly something I share in my, my business organization group that I meet with on a monthly basis. Um, a lot of interest from the other owners on how it works. Um, so yeah, we again, we just appreciate it. Uh, we're utilizing it to bring uh, a new technology to our manufacturing facility in the form of uh, a fiber laser cutting uh, process that you know currently we compete with uh, nationally. Uh, we don't have that specific piece of equipment here, and it, it's going to bring uh, a, a whole new technology improvement uh, process to our to our facility and benefit uh, the majority of our customers who are also Minnesota businesses. In addition to keeping us competitive over other manufacturers in other states, so I'm trying to ramble off as much as I can. But if I miss something, you know, be, feel free to ask. But uh, but yeah, no, we're really excited. the The process was um, extremely easy in my eyes to apply for. Um, our bank was familiar with what was needed on their side, and uh, the, uh, from the start to the application process, it was something that we were very happy with and excited to move forward with. Now. Thank you, Dan. Now uh, over to Drew. Dan gave me a perfect segue, so thank you for that. Um, so uh, I'm gonna keep on the automation loan participation program, but talk a little bit about um, from the lender perspective. Um, as the commissioner mentioned earlier, there is a requirement that um, these funds are the cause of and results in private financing. And so uh, a lot of what, we are looking at in these programs has to do with um, that piece of private financing growth loan fund. The equity raise is the is the private financing, and so there isn't another lender that needs to be involved hands on in the application process for the automation program. Um, there is uh, the business should have a lender identified or the lender should identify one of their clients that has a gap need that is uh, going to be expanding uh, by implementing some automation equipment. Um, the lead lender, uh, typically a banking lender, although there are some uh, ability for CDFI or other types of lenders like that to be the lead lender, um, they will identify the gap need on the project. Um, a lot of the time we see a gap due to um, the difficulty in recovery value for pieces of collateral that are very specific to a business. Um, some of this is uh, just there's some uh, gaps for that sort of reason, uh, also for lending limits, things of that nature. Uh, the companion loan, which is how Treasury uh, uh, terms this type of a participation program, requires at least a one-to-one -one match so that the um, bank financing is being approved in at least the same amount as the deed loan. Um, the companion loans for the program also have to conform to SSBCI standards, um, so there are some restrictions 
uh, around fair lending, interest rates, fees, um, use of proceeds, some things of that nature that every SSBCI transaction uh, for a loan product has to have. And so these loans are considered part of the SSBCI transaction. And so we will work with the banks to make sure that those are compliant um, and uh, that they meet the requirements so that the deed loan can also move forward. Um, deed is able to subordinate to the private financing. That is, um, you know, another benefit to the business to get the bank involved in a project that may have some gap needs. Um, the application that we put together, which is up on our program site, is uh, basically a joint application between the company itself and the bank. Uh, Deeds underwriter uh, will partner with, um, will will coordinate with the bank to review the underwriting that the bank has done. Um, and then we also do some of our own underwriting, um, looking at the bids uh, jointly, making sure that we have all of the same sort of specs around the project. Um, so I think that is most of the information for the lenders, if any, um, any lenders are interested and have a client, uh, we're always happy to answer questions that are also project specific. Uh, lenders do not have to uh, be registered ahead of time to participate in this program. It is on a project by project basis, uh, uh, which takes me to our next program, uh, which is the Minnesota Loan Guarantee Program, which does require lenders to be uh, enrolled. But I will talk about a little bit on borrowers first. Um, so as mentioned earlier, we do have two programs that we are administering at DEED, but that uh, are using outside lenders. Um, and then in this particular case, DEED is guaranteeing the loan. Uh, and in the other one, we are purchasing a participation in the loan. So we have a little over 40 enrolled lenders in the program right now. There is a directory up on Deed's website that potential borrowers can go to. Uh, there's a mix of lenders. There's uh, um, bank lenders and then also CDFI and nonprofit loan funds that are lending through this program. The credit decisions are all made by those lenders. So depending on your needs, um, it may be uh, a good choice to go with a banking partner or with one of those nonprofit loan fund partners, uh, depending on what the needs of the business are, what phase you're in regarding, like if it's a startup or an expansion, uh, if there are any potential credit issues uh, with the business owner, other things like that uh, will depend on where, what type of lender you want to go to. And then also part of that lender directory is that we have some filters by geography and also language uh, languages that the lenders have available for staff um, if that is a need. Uh, the lender is the one that is enrolling the pro project or the loan in the guarantee program. So, um, you know, you may go to a bank and they don't think that you need it. And that is also great. But we are here as a tool for the lenders when they do identify that need. So from a lender perspective, um, as I mentioned, we already have 40 some uh, lenders enrolled. We are taking lender applications on a rolling basis. And so those uh, applications are still available for additional lenders to enroll. If anyone is on the call that is not enrolled already and wants to do that, those are also up on our program site. And we're happy to answer any questions that you may have about that process. Um, so as I mentioned, the lenders are the ones that are going to be identifying the transactions that require the guarantee in order to move forward. Typically, they are going to be projects where there is just a relatively small credit deficiency that would not quite meet uh, your typical underwriting standards. And so it needs that additional backstop in order for your credit committee to approve. Um, the uh, Credit should be approved contingent upon the guarantee being approved, and um, also the lender has to state what the reason is for the guarantee um, to be needed. Uh, again, these are sort of similar 
uh, to the automation program. Sometimes there is a collateral shortfall. Sometimes it's because it's a startup business. Um, uh, other things of that nature. The guarantee is 80% up to $800,000. Uh, you can enroll loans that are more than a million dollars in the program, but we will only guarantee up to $800,000. We also have some limits on the term of the guarantee that we will go um, and are looking uh, to peg that to uh, the use of proceeds. Um, that loan use is restricted by the SSBCI guidelines, once again, that apply to all transactions. Um, examples for this are that there are no passive real estate allowed. Uh, you cannot purchase goodwill. Um, so business acquisitions can be a little tricky under this program unless they are converting to um, an employee ownership structure. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, there's a quarter point enrollment fee that is a one time upfront fee, and we are waiving that fee if it's a SETI owned business or if the term of the loan is less than a year. Uh, mostly, we expect to see term loans in this program uh, for a variety of eligible uses and industries. Uh, we will also allow lines of credit. Those lines uh, under a typical structure would uh, be for the origination and then two renewal periods, so no more than three years total. Um, and then D does look through the credit write-up uh, and other underwriting and has some risk standards that we uh, do an evaluation on to make sure that it makes sense for us to guarantee the loan. Um, and with that, I am going to invite Perla Mayo, who's the Director of Lending at Neighborhood Development Center in St. Paul, to come on to speak a little bit about what it's like to work as an intermediary lender who um, gets deed funding. Uh, NDC has worked in a number of programs at deed over the years and is enrolled as a lender in the guarantee program. Thank you, Drew. Hi, everybody. Yes, so uh, I'm Perla Mayo and I'm the director of lending with Neighborhood Development Center. We are a nonprofit lender, CDFI, located here in St. Paul, and we work mainly in the metro area. But as Drew mentioned, a NDC has been working with it for many, many years in different programs. And right now we are participating lender with a, with both two programs, the Minnesota Loan Guarantee Program and also the Small Business Participation Loan Program that I'm sure a, somebody's going to talk about it. But uh, yes, so the, the role of the lender is to kind of a, work with entrepreneur and help the entrepreneur to kind of a, apply for a loan with a, the lender. And then after the lender kind of collect all the documents and the application and approve the loan, so we submit or enroll uh, the loan with any any program that we think is going to work uh, for this specific project. So it's, it's a very easy uh, application and process. So mainly as a borrower, you are going to work directly with the lender. So everything that you are going to submit is with the lender, the application. I highly recommend you that you go to the lender directory and find a lender that is close from your city or neighborhood. And if NDC is in your neighborhood, we will be more happy to kind of uh, help you with the application. So and as a lender, we are going to ask for a uh, basic information. We are going to ask for a business plan if you are a startup. We are going to ask for taxes, personal taxes, business taxes. We are going to ask for the total cost of the project or budget. Uh, we are going to check uh, your credit report. So uh, if you have some uh, credit issues, uh, you should start working on that. And we are going to go through the underwriting process. That uh, depends who is the lender. It's going to take maybe four weeks, six weeks. That depends on the project, depends on the lender. And then if the loan is approved, uh, we are going to recommend uh, approval from deed. And after they do the, their own kind of uh, review and underwriting, so deed is going to kind of inform the lender and you that the loan has been approved to be enrolled in one specific program. And then the closing uh, is going to happen with the lender. So in other words, all the, the underwriting, the closing, the loan disbursement is directly with the lender. So this kind of loan is no 
uh, directly with DEED, but however, the funds and the guarantee are coming from DEED. Without the support of DEED, sometimes uh, lenders cannot approve the loan. So it's very important to get the support of DEED because uh, that way, uh, as a lender, we reduce our risk and we can lend more money to entrepreneurs. So if you have any questions, so uh, you can go to the lender directory. My contact information is there, and I will be happy to share with you more how you can get ready to apply for these loans. Thank you, Verla. Great. Uh, the last program that DEED is directly administering uh, is the other one that Perla mentioned, which is the Small Business Loan Participation Program. Um, I will maybe short this a little bit and say that uh, from a transaction criteria, this is going to be fairly similar to what I said for the guarantee program. Uh, borrowers are applying directly with the lenders. They make the credit decisions. Um, there's no specific industry or loan purpose aside from the restrictions that apply to all SSBCI transactions and then also the ones that um, apply to the lender's own loan policies. Um, the major difference on this one is that this is uh, all uh, enrolled CDFI loan funds that are um, CDFI and nonprofit loan funds that are doing these loans. Uh, our expectation uh, is that we will have a directory available in hopefully by the end of next week that will also be up on Deed's website, which will name uh, all of those lenders. We are in the contracting process with them right now, which is why they are not up publicly. Um, a lot of those lenders, the other thing to know as a borrower, um, again, this is sort of a, a non non-traditional lending so it's uh, typically businesses where there's either uh, maybe a credit issue there's going to be more startups in this space um, folks who don't have a long history so um, either as individuals or as a business and um, also sometimes folks who need more technical assistance is available from these sorts of lenders so if you need a little more outside help to get the business rolling, um, this may be a good option. Again, the lenders are the ones who are going to identify the program, um, this along with the guarantee, and then um, some state-funded programs are, are available options for a number of these um, CDFI and nonprofit loan funds. Um, for the lenders, uh, they are just going to be starting again. I think I mentioned we're expecting to have 11 lenders at least um, at this phase of this program. Uh, so the lenders will, uh, similar to the guarantee program, be requesting enrollment in the program. In this case, Deed will be purchasing a participation in the loan, which uh, basically just means we're buying part of the loan, um, which the lender is originating. Um, it would either be 25% of the loan if it's a non-SETI transaction or 30% if it's SETI owned. Our minimum purchase is 10,000, maximum is 250,000. Again, that is our purchase amount. And if somebody needed to do a loan larger than that, we would just cap the, the purchase. Same restrictions on the term loans and the lines of credit that I mentioned with the guarantee program. Um, if the loan does default, uh, there are some subordination uh, 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 criteria listed that the lenders will have to follow for this. Um, all of the lenders are enrolling loans on a first come first serve basis, so there is not an allocated amount of money. So once that lender directory is up, as long as there's money in the program, uh, you should be able to, uh, borrowers should be able to go to any of those lenders and have a equal shot at access to this, um, assuming that you fit within the lender's loan criteria. So there may be times that borrowers would want to look at more than one lender in this program. Um, and again, everything has to comply with SSBCI regulations and uh, meet deeds risk standards for the program. Uh, one of the end goals with these SSBCI funds is to revolve them over the course of the uh, program life. And so uh, we are uh, being somewhat cautious uh, to make sure that the funds do come back and we are able to get them out to more businesses. And with that, I am going to send this back over to the commissioner to talk about the programs with the university.
you're on mute. Thank you. Uh, we mentioned at the start we had five programs uh, that we rolled out, and we were very excited to create a uh, venture capital program. Uh, in fact, there's two programs within this. Um, <clears throat> Deed did not have uh, the authority to uh, make equity investments, uh, and so uh, we did have the authority, however, to work with a state-sponsored entity who did. And uh, the University of Minnesota obviously has uh, some background in this uh, and <clears throat> became a very good partner for us uh, through this program. So we worked with the University of Minnesota's uh, Office of Investments and Banking uh, to manage both the multi-fund program and the direct uh, investment program. Uh, as it relates to the um, <clears throat> Uh, multi-fund program. Uh, the University of Minnesota will invest uh, in funds as a limited partner uh, in venture capital funds. Uh, it will also make uh, direct investments on a case-by-case -case basis. You can see how we've split the money up uh, of the total $34.5 million uh, into venture capital. Um, $22.5 will go into um, uh, venture capital funds and, and another 12 uh, is planned to go into direct uh, investments. Uh, the focus is uh, uh, is on startups in Minnesota and in a variety of industries. <clears throat> Clearly, <clears throat> this is a statewide approach. Um, this isn't uh, and has uh, some to do with the university's own technology, but Excuse me, quite frankly, it is about uh, startups uh, all across the state. Uh, and so our role in this program is to uh, ensure compliance with the SSBCI requirements. <clears throat> the University of Minnesota runs this program. They have a uh, investment manager uh, who is responsible for this. Um, and we work very closely with that individual. Both programs will be uh, are, are open for application, and you can see the uh, website there. And thanks, Drew, uh, or actually maybe it was Don that um, puts the links in the chat uh, here to our program page, uh, as well as uh, the University of Minnesota. <coughs> so, Next slide, please, Drew. Um, we are uh, extremely excited uh, about the progress that has been made thus far uh, in all of these programs. Uh, this has been a culmination of uh, a year and a half's worth of work. I'm very thankful to Drew and Tiffany and John uh, for their work in this and all of our uh, partners who are helping us deploy this capital. If you are an organization who is interested in participating, um, you can um, uh, apply on our website or you can see how uh, you can apply to be an enrolled lender uh, or uh, uh, potentially uh, in the future in our participation program as examples. If you are an organization that serves businesses or you are a business, um, we have lists of lenders whom you can go to on our website uh, who will be the ones that are uh, your interface uh, for uh, the programs, as well as the two programs that we run, uh, the Automation Loan Program and the Growth Loan Fund. Uh, so with that, we would uh, like to open it up for any questions uh, about uh, any of the programs. Uh, or uh, or the requirements uh, that are associated. So we really appreciate your attendance today and and your attention, uh, and would look forward to answering your questions. You can put uh, questions in the chat uh, if you want, uh, or uh, raise your hand, uh, or just come off mute. Maybe uh, that might be easier. We might be able to see it that way. So questions. Um, 
Dante White. Do you want to come off mute? Hey, Kevin, it's not directly related to me, but I did have a, a quick question. I have a, a couple of friends that run nonprofits. And I was just curious, are they able to access these same funds for uh, improvements and that sort of thing through the nonprofits that they run? Uh, nonprofits are an eligible uh, entity type to um, to receive SSBCI funding. Uh, there's one of the lenders in the guarantee program that specializes in lending to nonprofits, and so that is probably uh, the best uh, place to start if they're looking for financing that would be able to access this uh, the SSBCI funds. Um, Dante, are you able to come off mute? I, I believe I am now. Can okay. You okay. Okay. Great. Um, I am interested in the small business loan program, and as a startup, I am curious on where do I start. Being that the list for lenders haven't came out next week, is there a contact ID that I need to be um, talking with? Um, that lender directory is probably going to be your uh, your best option and uh, in order to do a little bit better customer service uh, there is a lot of overlap between the small business participation program and an existing state uh, program called the emerging entrepreneur loan program and so we are actually sharing a directory and you'll be able to see which lenders are enrolled in one or both of those programs um, they'll still be accessible through the different program pages, but but just to be consistent and try to get, get uh, all state resources available in front of potential borrowers, um, we've combined those. So um, you can look at that existing emerging entrepreneur directory. That's a about a seven year old program. So it is already online and then the new ones will be integrated into there as they're available. OK, thank you. I can't. Heidi, can you come off mute? Maybe. Heidi, did you have a question? I am slow. That's all right. To get a mute, but here I am. Yes, would you please repeat, um, Drew, your response to the question about nonprofit lending? Uh, that is an eligible type to receive funding from SSBCI dollars. Um, so if uh, um, if they are working with a lender that is willing to lend to a nonprofit, that would not be a prohibition on our end, as long as everything else about the transaction is um, is equal so it you know it wouldn't fit into all of the programs obviously growth loan fund and automation would need to be uh would need to be um for-profit businesses just because of the business types that we have um although i know that there have been some social benefit corps that i think that have applied to those programs as well okay very good thank you there's one in the chat oh um for neighborhood development center i i guess perla had mentioned that her contact information is up on that lender directory so she might be the one she'll come back on and talk yes uh, yes i could you if you can if you can send me an email so i will be happy to kind of contact direct it to you so i can i can send you i can put my email right now here and i can give you a call to talk about neighborhood development center and this the programs yep i don't see other questions in the chat does anybody else um edward you want to come off mute uh thank you drew educate educating us uh, about this program On the investment uh, program, do we have SEDI allocation? You're talking about for the direct investment program? 
Yeah. So there was about $12 million allocated to that, I believe. Um, and that is one of the ones that is running through the University of Minnesota. So uh, the application and everything um, is going to be on their website that Dawn posted in the chat earlier. Um, and then some of the businesses that are in the space for the um, direct investment program are also um, maybe eligible for growth loan fund, and that is one of the deed administered programs. So you you can also look at our website to see if that would be a qualifying space for you. Um, the other thing that I should probably mention that's sort of still in the works is um, the university has approved the first handful of funds that it's investing in as a limited partner. And so uh, we're working with them to see what the appetite is for um, referring deal flow to those funds if that goes through the U and um, we can keep folks updated on that front as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Anyone else? Drew, there's a question in the chat. <clears throat> oh, Which program sorry. would be best for early startup businesses? Um, I would, well, if you are a high tech startup, then I would say growth loan fund or the programs that I was just talking about through the University of Minnesota. Um, and if you are uh, more of a brick and mortar type of startup or services oriented startup, I would say that the programs that um, that work with the uh, outside lenders using deed funds would be a great place to start. So looking at those lender directories for either guarantee or um, or the participation program once that is up and running would both be good um, depending on how much past business experience you have, you may wanna consider whether or not to approach one of those, uh, the community development type of lenders versus a banking lender. Um, so that generally businesses either don't explore banking banks as an option right away if they haven't done this before uh, that is you know always a good place to start looking for your financing the regulatory environment there makes them uh, more conservative by nature and therefore sometimes is going to get you the best rate for your business startup and expansion but if they are not uh, working if that doesn't work to get um, approval in that, then I would say looking at those CDFI uh, nonprofit lenders is also a really good place to be for startup. No, I would also say, uh, and Drew touched on this earlier, uh, we have a similar program called the Emerging Entrepreneur Program. Um, DEED has a variety of programs uh, that uh, that we run, uh, and a lot of these SSBCI programs uh, are sort of filling gaps that we have in some of our programming. So if you're really early, maybe even pre-venture uh, uh, capital, pre-growth uh, loan fund, you might look at our Launch Minnesota Innovation Grants um, at, as an example. If you're post some of this, uh, we have some other growth uh, programs uh, at DEED, but uh, there's a lot of uh, potentially a, a lot of different uh, ideas here. So um, uh, appreciate that question. I think you did you see the other two questions, Drew, in the chat? Yes, I just put in the link to the guarantee program. Um, that is the one that is still open to lender enrollment. Um, so that's going to be uh, your best bet, you can click through there. There's two different forms. There's one for regulated lenders and one for non-regulated lenders. So use the appropriate one. Uh, let us know if you have questions on that. Um, estimating processing time for an application for automation has varied somewhat. It's, it's getting a little tighter as we uh, have experienced more loans in that space. 
Um, and then uh, Tiffany, who uh, Kevin mentioned earlier, has actually recently joined the team and has taken over administering that program. Uh, I won't put her on the spot and ask her how long it takes her to process things, but what I will say is just sort of the same thing that we generally say when we get any application at DEED for any financing program. Uh, if the application is complete and there are not uh, particular red flags or gaps in knowledge um, or lag time in getting questions answered, we can go fairly quickly. Um, I, I would say because of contracting and whatnot, probably four weeks would be the quickest we could do. And so um, particularly with lead times on things like automation equipment and other manufacturing equipment, we often advise that you approach us and sort of get the project on our radar first, which can help you get that complete application in. Um, if Tiffany or John want to jump in here and say anything else about that timing aspect, uh, feel free to do that. But that's general general guidance for all of DEED's programs. We'll take that as a no on them. <laughs> Any other questions? Going once. And uh, Drew, did uh, was this session recorded? Um, uh, there's a little red button, so yes. <laughs> okay, and uh, will this be posted on the website? Yes, we'll Excellent. figure out. I think there is a main SSBCI page, which we will work on getting it posted there. Great. Uh, Drew does a <clears throat> Drew and team do a great job of keeping uh, the website updated as well, uh, where there is a lot of uh, information on all of these programs. Uh, uh, and uh, certainly the lenders that uh, uh, you can contact or very soon for one of the programs. Um, and uh, and we hope you uh, enjoyed the session today. Uh, and we are uh, extremely excited about the progress made thus far. Uh, as mentioned, big thank you to Drew, John and Tiffany for their work uh, in implementing this program. And thanks everyone for attending today. So hope you have a good rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you.